everyone, Pot ASM. Welcome to part two of our Fujimi 112 and Nissan Skyline R32 GTR video build. Right, so <laughs> a lot to get through today. Um, I got a bit held up waiting on paint and ended up recording about, I think it was nearly, it was about 10 and a half hours of footage, um, which I managed to get one and a half videos out of. But because it was all over the shop, it's, it's some interesting editing was required. So uh, we're a little bit all over the place. Uh, so bear with me in the video because it literally, yeah, so much stuff has happened in the last week with this build. Uh, I forgot what paint colours I used and so on and where I was at as well. It's just crazy. But today we're going to mainly focus on cutting off all the engine components, um, getting them prepped, primed, painted, a little bit of alterations here and there, um, and then getting our chassis painted up, which leads us on to part three in which we're going to get our wheels done. They are done. They look beautiful. Um, and then we'll get our engine assembled and hopefully start adding a little bit of interest to the engine bay as well. So, get up a brew. It's a shorter video today. You're probably like, oh, thank God for that. Uh, put your feet up. Have a little watch. If you've got any comments at the end, please feel free to add them. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications to get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. Right, so let's start the day cutting parts off the sprue. We've got our Tamiya side cutters. Um, we've got quite a few components to remove for the engine, a lot more than I originally thought. Uh, so these are all going to be cut off with the side cutters, then cleaned up uh, with the UMP sanders, and then we can get them all prepped and ready for primer. So I'm not going to bore you by showing every single part cut off. We'll just show a few parts, a quick bit of clean up, and then we'll get these prepped and ready for primer. So quite a lot of parts. Now, one thing I didn't realize about this kit is there's no real glue required most of this is screwed together um so yeah that's a bit different i'm not sure what to think about that it's an expensive kit and i was hoping um well i wasn't thinking it was going to be screwed together so we're going to see how that goes through the build but we've got our exhaust system here because my friend dan scattergood very kindly 3d printed me a large bore exhaust and i'm just weighing up how we're going to attach it which we figured out with help from the live show so that's all good. So we've got the intercooler pipe. There's a nice big ejection pin mark on this. So we're going to use some of the UV glue to fill it, cure it, and sand it, which works pretty well. It's not a completely flawless uh, fill, but it's more than enough what we need. When we come to final assembly of the engine, I'll have a look at this piece, and we can see how well it actually did as a filler. But in case of putting the UV glue in, hit with the UV light, and it cures. It's then sandable, so we get the most of it off with a 400 UMP customizable sander. And then come with our 220 sponge to get the rest. And then our buffer to get it back to original plastic. And then we just have a check over our finger for any ridges. If it's there, we'll re repeat and carry on until it's gone. But we'll have a look at that in later parts and see how well it filled it. We've got some of our Suji Burrito files now. These are very high quality Japanese files i'm just getting in amongst all the grooves on the uh, drive shaft gaiters once we've done that with the uh, pointed triangular file come with the 220 thinning sponge from ump then we can repeat this as and where needed it's a quick way of get rid of that flash we could use the glue method like we'll show in a little bit but these are quite pronounced in here so they did require a bit of a harsher solution as you can see we're using our tamiya craft knife here to get rid of excess seam line molds further around the model. Did take a lot of clean up this. But short work, using the right tools, right techniques, it can make even the most boring job quick and easy. So there we go, once we've got rid of the most of that now, we can come with our Tamiya Extra Thin. I'm just gonna apply this uh, in between all the recesses. What that'll do, that'll soften the plastic around any raised seam lines we've not quite got rid of. Let it sit for a minute, Keep working it with the brush and it'll eventually melt those seam lines into virtually nothing at all. Once all the parts are cleaned up and this was a good few hours work, we're going to start mounting them all uh, for primer. So we're going to use uh, various methods of white tack uh, to hold on big pieces. 
and then little blobs of the white tack here to put it into recesses. White tack is basically oil free blue tack, I'm led to believe. Um, we'll also use uh, cocktail sticks into already holes that are already in there, screw holes to hold parts like so. Nice and easy. And then we can drill into areas that can't be seen carefully with our little battery powered drill, which sadly you cannot buy anymore. It's no longer made. I've had this for about 10 years. Very handy little tool. You can use a pin vise for this. And then you can insert cocktail sticks into the holes nice and securely. And then pop them in our part holder ready for primer. So, various methods there. You pick which is the best one for you and use that to your advantage. Now, like I say, some of these parts are screwed together. There are several bags of screws. When I reviewed the kit, I did think there's an awful lot of screws, uh, but yeah. So like I say, we'll report on that as we go. Is it going to be beneficial to the build? Is it going to take away from the build? I don't know, because this kit's kind of in the middle of a Tamiya 12 scale kit. The 12 scale Tamiya kits do have a lot of uh, screw together parts, but for the most part, it seems like nearly everything on this screws together. Will it be good or bad? I don't know, time will tell. So we've got the two uh, engine and transmission halves here. They're literally held together with one screw. Make sure you get the correct screws. And then we've got the piece for the back, which I screwed together and then realized I needed to undo to get on the back of the engine. So we're not gluing this, there is a visible seam and I did contemplate filling it and I thought, you know what? Let's see how good a job Fujimi have done with this. Let's, let's get it all painted up and let's see what it's going to look like. So get it all assembled. We're using the kit supplied screwdriver for now. Just lining it up, making sure it's all lined up, screw it together. And we'll see how this goes. Let's see how good a kit this is, just screwing it together. You could glue it if you wished. For me, I'm going to follow the instructions. Now, we've been using the 0.5mm needle nozzle in the Apex for most of the work on this so far. So I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to change it over. So you get the 0.5mm needle. Put the cap back on the 0.31 and keep that to one side. The 0.51 is short and it is marked with three lines, I believe it is, on the back. Five lines, sorry. Uh, there's also a new needle nozzle and a new needle cap um, guard at the front as well. Now, the needle does protrude through the front of this. It's just the way it is. So screw the front on. Make sure your trigger's back in position. Make sure your needle goes through the back nice and cleanly. Tighten it up. Check it works. But you will notice the needle does protrude through the front. So be very careful when handling the airbrush. So a little bit of our focus. Do apologize. We've got some Tamiya Fine Surface Primer, which has been decanted out the aerosol. It's been thinned about 20% with Tamiya Lacquer Thinner with Retarder. And we're going to prime this absolutely giant chassis. So we were waiting on paint at this time. But if you remember right, we used all the paint on the body. And I completely forgot I had all this underneath to paint, all the engine bay to paint, some of the engine components to paint, and had to go and buy more paint. So that I hadn't arrived at this point, and it was kind of holding me off. So because of that, we're not going to get this painted today. We're going to do that in part three. Um, because by the time the paint did arrive, I had about 10 hours of footage, and uh, that was way too much for one single part. So we get this primed today, and then we'll revisit this and all the engine components in part three, and get those all painted up, uh, all painted up uh, and clear coated. So, like I say, this is the Tamiya uh, Surface Primer. Lovely stuff. Absolutely stinks to high heaven, though. It really does. Uh, it's a lot cleaner to use out the airbrush than the spray can. Um, it caused a lot of mess last time. And in hindsight, I should have sprayed it through the airbrush. Definitely should have. I've used UMP Grey Primer. I'm using this. No particular reason I used it on the other, on the body shell. Because I used a rattle can. And after a few coats, there we go. There's all the underneath done and our engine bay, and we are ready to get our blue colour down. Just a quick touch up here and there, we think is required. We've got all around the edges of the chassis as well. Uh, any areas that may be exposed, covers really well, dries really fast. Very, very nice primer. And as you can see, we've done our engine components as well. Anything that's grey in that picture will be blue. So we've got the rocker cover, cam cover, whatever you want to call it, the cam bell cover, the front um, bracket, I suppose it is. Now, 
All the rest of the components, we've got our 0.35 Apex. We're at 25 PSI. We're at 18 PSI with the gray prime, I did mean to say. Um, and yeah, 24 PSI, UMP black prime. I'm just going to give all these parts a couple of light coats and then come in for our third coat, a little bit heavier, and get a nice primer coat down. So some very large components to spray. So take your time, just build it up nice and slow as usual. Building the primer up, don't hose it on. And there seems to be a lot of misconception about this, just to hose it on. If you do that, you'll get pooling. Now, the twin turbos in this kit are dire. They are awful. They're supposedly the turbos there, like a giant whistles. Um, they are very, very poor representations. When I spoke to my buddy Dan, uh, about 3D printing me some in resin. He offered, and here they are. So we've got the whole component, but we're just going to use the actual left-hand side part um, because to alter the rest of the manifold would have been a nightmare. And as you can see, there's a vast improvement on how they look. So we need to remove these, and then we can glue uh, our new components in place. Like so. Got our JLC. Razor saw, very, very high quality saw. You can put these up on eBay. Uh, they're pretty cheap, they're about 10, 13 pounds. And it's one of the most accurate razor saws uh, I have in my arsenal. I have several of the big Tamiya. I've got the smaller Tamiyas. Um, I've got the Mr. Hobby one. They are very, very nice. But for me, this is the most precise. So we get that cut off. Then we come in with a sponge sander and lightly sand the edge. We don't want to lose the profile of the rest of the turbo body housing. So I believe, I'm gonna say this wrong now, we have just cut off the compressor housing. I think it is, I forget now. It's one of it's the other turbine, I forget which one it is. Um, and we're gonna put a new one in its place. Now I did contemplate cutting the whole thing off of the manifold, but not only is this orientated the wrong way, uh, it would have took quite a bit of mucking around for the exhaust system side as well. So I thought this is the easiest way. So cutting the turbo in half with our razor saw again. Be careful of resin dust. Be very aware. You should wear gloves really. I'm a bit naughty not wearing gloves. Make sure you've got a dust mask on as well. And then we've got a 400 customizable, which we then pick a 240 because it needs a little bit more removal to flatten it. And we're going to get this as straight as we possibly can. And then we can line it up, have a little look. Yeah, that looks good. That looks a million times better than the standard part. And now we've got a whole ton of cleanup on this manifold. There's seam lines all over this thing. Again, same as the rest of the part, lots and lots of cleanup. So a good hour or so later, we're cleaned up. We've got some of our Loctite Perfect Pen CA Gel. A little dab on where required make sure we've got it all turned around the right way we've got the turbo the correct orientated way pop it in place hold it for a second let the ca glue grab it have a little look it's a huge difference this it, it really is compared to the kit parts which are absolutely dire um there's a big big difference you can see them side by side or you could have cut them both off now um, but there's a huge difference. And there we go. There's both of them in place, all cleaned up, glued in situ, and ready for primer. Right then, so we've got various metal components to paint up. And as I said before, I'm trying to move away from the uh, enamel AK Extremes and solely use the Tamiya lacquers. So we've got these through the 0.2mm uh, Apex 18 PSI. I like using the 0.2 for the metallics. Don't ask me why. I just do. I think I get a better metallic finish. So this is LP38, this is the matte aluminium, and we're going to spray up various colours, but mostly it'd be LP38, LP70, LP11, uh, with a few other colours in between. So the sump is LP38, the actual engine itself, I believe, is uh, LP70, I think I did it in. I'm trying to remember now, quite hard to remember when you're painting all of these different parts. So light coats, they need a couple of white coats to build them up don't need to spray them on wet just build it up you'll see it slowly build up as we go and 
there we go same on the i believe this is the hot pipe this is lp38 as well so there's a good chance that engine was lp38 too so for the uh in the uh, sorry the exhaust manifold we did lp61 and then we'll mask up and spray our turbos a different color so like i say moving away from the enamels the ak extremes which i do love they are very very good paints because they're enamel, they take forever to dry, and when you handle them, they have a real chance of removing the paint. It rubs off, you can leave fingerprints behind. So moving to the lacquers, these are dry very, very fast, and it just makes life a little easier. I've test sprayed all the Tamiya colors on spoons, so I've got them for reference. Um, and yeah, this is my plan in the long term. Got some Tamiya LP5 now, semi-gloss black, another favorite color of mine. Uh, and we're just going to spray up all the various engine components uh, and everything else that isn't metallic, basically. Quite a lot of parts to paint up. It's actually, it's a funny kit, this. It's detailed, but it's not detailed. Um, if you're just doing a quick out-the-box build, I think you'd get away with it. Me, I want to kind of detail up this a little bit. So hopefully in part three, we can start adding some wiring and pipes and what have you. Um, I'm not going to go crazy with it, but I just want to add a little bit of visual detail to it. So we're through the 0.35 Apex, 18 PSI, several light coats. It's over UMP Black Primer, so it covers really well. We've still got various parts to mask off and spray. It's had a bit of tonal difference. But for the most part, the LP5 looks fantastic. It really does. It's a great color, and it really suits all the engine components as well. We've got a battery as well, uh, which we're going to add a custom... Um, home printed decal too again to add a bit of visual interest to it and there we go there's all the parts all sprayed up in various colors like i said it's a mixture of lp38 lp70 lp11 lp19 and lp61 so the intercooler was sprayed the center of it in lp38 we're using our tamiya masking tape and our ump tape dispenser to mask off the center and i'm going to spray the edges in lp70 uh, it's had a little bit of tonal difference between it. So we've masked it all up. We're going to remount it ready for paint. Then we can give it another go over with a brighter silver and hopefully add a little bit of interest. Now we've got some of the Tamiya 2mm tape. We're going to mask off and spray our turbos a different colour. Hopefully to add just a little bit more interest to it. Now I completely forget offhand what colour we used on this. I've got a feeling it was LP38. I may be wrong though. <laughs> so using a mixture of the Tamiya thin tapes and the thicker um, 10 mil and 18 mil tapes, we're going to mask all this off. The tape dispenser from mainly at UMP works absolutely brilliant. We're also using this to mask off the engine because we're going to mask off and spray the actual block and leave the gearbox transmission uh, and cylinder head a different color. So just a bit of careful masking. Okay, so we're going to spray up now the rest of these components using various Tamiya colours. I will try and remember them offhand, but we've got our UMP Apex 2mm needle nozzle sprayed at 18 psi. And at the top of my head, this is LP70. And we're going to give this a few light coats. And this should give a brighter silver compared to the matte uh, aluminium flat aluminium look in the center so again just build it up slowly and there we go nice uh, nice deep metallic color they really do spray well these are very forgiving as well you don't want to hose them on but you can just build it up you can build them up really quickly as well and there we are so that's that painted up i put that to one side to dry we then got our brake master cylinder as well which has already been painted in black and now we've masked off to spray the silver. We then need to mask off to spray the white. And finally mask off to spray the yellow. We've got our prop shaft and drive shafts, which we are painting, I think, at the top of my head. This is rubber black, which I think is Tamiya. Is it LP65? I think it is. And then we've got our, uh, let me see. There's so many colors used on this kit. It is very, very hard to keep track 
of what I've used, and I honestly cannot remember on this one at all. Um, I think it was like Dark Iron, something like that. I've got into the habit of showing the painted camera, but since we've been adding the captions, the pictures, I've actually stopped. So I think I need to carry on doing that for myself uh, to stop me losing track of the colours. Just one of those things. We've got a Ritamia X2 here now, uh, spraying up our battery. The top's been painted in black. I'm going to spray in the bottom in white. Same for the uh, screen wash bottle. And we'll do the same for the expansion bottle as well. And these will be uh, painted later to try and simulate some liquid inside them. The same will do for the uh, brake fluid uh, reservoir as well. Turbos being sprayed up. I'm pretty sure that that's LP38. Like I say, I think in future I'll cover both bases. I'll show the paint and we'll show the caption on screen as well. Uh, obviously, the caption makes life easier for you. For me right now, so many different paints. I can't see the angles, so I lose track of what's what. We've got some microscale decal film solution here and some isopropyl alcohol. We're going to mix this about 50-50 and we're going to spray our home printed decals. Um, same for the exhaust from Dan. Thank you, Dan, for the exhaust and all the other 3D bits you printed. A big thanks to Alan Parker for sorting all these parts out for me as well. And for Simon Shorey for his advice along the way. I did try and print 3D, uh, sorry, I did try and home print my own decals. It didn't go great. Um, so I kind of gave up and the guys have offered to sort me out as and when needed. So we mix this. 50-50, give it a real good stare up. And then we've got our 0.35 Apex uh, and about 20 odd PSI. This is the battery uh, labels that Alan very kindly printed for me. We're going to give it a few light coats. I'm a little bit of our camera there shot, unfortunately. But we're just giving a few light coats. It's basically a varnish to protect the decals. So we just build it up slowly. It is designed to be brushed on, so you can put it on quite heavy, but I find a couple of light coats and then a couple of heavier coats after it's dry for a couple of minutes works really well. So we've also got some Nismo logos. Uh, these are ones that I actually managed to print. Again, through the Apex, exact same method. They were, they were done on different days, uh, but we're just giving them a good coat of this. Let them dry for a few hours, or in the case of the battery one, five minutes. Then, with it using its own decal film, these are printed on clear decal film. Well, the Minisma one is. The battery one's on white. You need to cut as close as possible to have as little carrier film as you possibly can. We'll then add some water and apply them in the usual manner. Let them get wet. Let them soak for a minute. Remove them from the backing paper. Pop them in place. They did turn out too bad, to be honest. Not too bad at all. As you can see, the colour's not too bad. We've got our Tamiya decal tweezers. We're just manipulating it all in place. And this will be seen through the front bumper of the car. Just making sure everything is centralised. You've got equal distance each side. You can remember it was about 8mm each side. So happy we can set it down in place, hit it with some UMP normal, let that dry, and then we hit it with the strong later on. So we're just removing all the excess fluid. We've got the UMP normal decal solution. We're just going to very carefully go over that a couple of times, or three or four, and then put it to one side to dry. We can come back later with a stronger solution and get this in place. Once we get that a bit of a matte clear coat later on, it'll blend it in place. And it should look pretty good. Same method with the battery one. This is on white decal paper. So we literally need to trim this right up to the edge of the battery markings themselves. Otherwise the white would have showed through. And again, Helen did a great job on these. Thank you, buddy. And yeah, get it in place. Remove the excess fluid from behind. Use the cotton bud. Then hit it with strong, sorry, normal UP decal solution. Let that dry. And then hit it with the strong to make sure it's all fully set in place. Worked really, really well. And a big thanks to these guys for sorting me out. Why the kit doesn't come with one of these, I don't know. Bit silly, really. But it does add a little bit of difference. We've still got to paint up the top of the battery as well. But it'll add a little bit of difference. And hopefully we can add some battery cables too. 
So even more masking on the brake master cylinder. So we sprayed the silver underneath. We're going to mask that off now and spray the white for the actual bottle. Then we'll mask that off and spray the yellow. And then we'll come in later and try and add some fluid to it using Tamiya smoke. That is the plan anyway. We'll see how that one works out. So some very careful fiddly masking. It took a lot of work to do this. But once it's done, we can spray the white and then we can come in and with LP, um, I think it's eight, through the three, five apex, 18 PSI, we can spray the yellow cap on the top. And there we go. That's that done. A couple of coats, let it dry. And there we are. That's the brake master cylinder done. Just checking it's all covered properly. Give it a second, and then you can always hit it with another coat should you require. Now we've got all the uh, auxiliary belts to mask. So we sprayed them up uh, in rubber black LP65. And the easiest way of doing this after looking at it was to mask all around the belt and then all around the pulleys using the Tamiya thin tape. Again, very, very boring job. This section of the videos mostly consisted of sanding and masking but as i always say the time spent here is time well spent and it will pay off in the end and hopefully give us a, a good looking model so just some careful masking using the various sizes of the one two and three mil tamiya tape we can get it all masked off get the pulley sprayed i think we did these in gloss black in the end did contemplate masking up and spraying all these uh gaiters for the drive shafts and then thought you know what, let's paint them up. Bit of a layer of black, Tamiya flat brush from the HF range. And uh, yeah, let's let's do a little bit of brush work. Quicker, simple, and quite nice to be able to brush paint every now and then. Do enjoy it. Definitely getting back to basics. A couple of uh, light passes with the model colour, and it does cover really well. We've thinned it with a drop of water, as always. But yeah, very, very good paint to model colours for brush painting. Um, the HF brushes, great quality brushes from Tamiya uh, for doing general work like this. You get two flats and a pointed brush in the set. They are very, very good. Same for the um, airbox rubber hose as well or connector. You get that a brush over. Don't forget, all, most of these products you can buy at umpretail.com. In the description of the video is a big list of all the products I use in my videos and where you can get them from. Again, a little bit more detail painting, just doing the end of the prop shaft. Just that little bit of visual interest. We've also got to hit all this with a wash as well. So hopefully that add a little bit of depth to it as well. But just some careful brush painting and we're all done. Now, our paint did arrive, thankfully. Um, so I thought, you know what, let's include it in this video. We can get it all done out of the way. Like I said, this was filmed all over the place. Um, I didn't know to leave this clip in here or add it to the next one. I thought, you know what? I might as well. It's a shorter video today, so we might as well pop it in. So we've got a 0.5 apex again, 18 psi. And we're going to fill it up. Before you start spraying, unlike me, remember your respirator. I sprayed a quick couple of blasts and thought, oops, I've not got it on. Now, this paint is very, very opaque. It takes a lot of coats to cover, especially when you've got lots of recesses like this. Um, any recessed or hidden areas needed extra coat aimed directly at them to get the coverage. Um, but it does take a lot of paint to use this blue. Um, so there's quite a lot of spraying here on this. It took quite a while to do to build it up slowly. You don't want to hose it on. So we just go around, methodically get everywhere covered, the engine bay as well. So, yeah, we're thinned about 70% with Tamiya Lacquer Thinner with Retarder. Uh, it's very good paint. It pays to buy it in larger quantities if you can as well. Uh, a single 50ml bottle, like shown on the bench at the back left, uh, works out about £18 posted, whereas two of those, 100ml, works out about £22 posted. Uh, so myself now and Parker, we bought half each. Obviously, I've already used one um and i'll only use it on a future project as well so the more you can buy the cheaper it is sounds totally counterintuitive but it is after several coats this is where we're at 
it's darkened up nicely and you can see just needs some of the recesses where it's not quite collected like i said it's a very thin paint um it does need quite a bit of work so we run all over those parts separately to build it up but several coats later it's all done and we're there now so we'll let that dry we'll hit it with a clear coat later on as well and there we go we've got a beautiful blue color matching our bodywork so yes quite a lot of paint there quite a lot of time um but worth it in the long run i think we also did all the engine components as well because we want these to match the uh blue of the body so add a little bit of interest to the uh, engine bay did contemplate maybe a bit of carbon and a few other bits and bobs but i think i'm mostly settled on the blue i think it'll look well and again just several light coats to build it all up and give us some nice depth and interest to the engine bay don't rush it just take your time build it all up several coats a lot of work but well worth it so like i say um lots of footage today i've still got a little bit left over it's about another 10 minutes already edited to the next video so yeah a little bit of extra than required but it did get held up on that paint the paint was like took over a week to arrive hermes are really really slow at the minute uh, which is a real shame but Hey, it arrived, we got it all painted, and uh, we can progress properly with the build now as well. So we're back in part three soon, which we're going to deal with the wheels. They're looking really nice. I'm very happy with those. Um, and then, like I say, we'll get all the engine components assembled together, give them a wash, a bit of detail, and then I'm hoping we can add some interest to that engine base. So I've got plans for the brake lines from the ABS pump, battery cables, some hoses, some other cabling. I'm not going to go absolutely mental and do the whole lot because I don't think I could. Uh, but I certainly want to add some visual interest to that engine bay because I think it deserves it. And uh, hopefully it'll look pretty good as well. So stand by on that one. I have no idea how many parts are going to be in this build yet. I really don't. Uh, I don't want it to be like, you know, 60 odd parts. But, I, you know, I've got to make sure I get all the detail in there too. So I'm aiming for about eight. That's the plan. Whilst it's a big kit, it's simple. It's it's not the most mega detailed. It's not like I'm building a Tamiya 12 scale kit, which would require a lot of parts. Uh, as I said earlier on the video, I didn't realize it screwed together at all. Somebody mentioned it in the comments, and I was like, no, it can't be. And I went through the instructions, and I was like, oh yeah, it is screwed together for the most part. I'll report on that at the end of the build, but I think of that. Um, but I don't can't think of a single part I've glued on yet. Nothing at all. I've used glue to remove the seams, but I've not glued an actual physical part uh, with proper plastic glue just yet. Uh, we will have to use CA glue because we've got aftermarket parts going later in the brakes and the seats and that. Uh, but yeah, like I said, let's build it. Let's see what we think. Uh, and I'll report back on what I think about it being screwed together. So there we are. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll be back in part three pretty soon, I think. Uh, probably just after the weekend. Uh, make sure you tune into our live show tonight as well, Friday night. Um, so, yeah, if you've got any comments, questions, whatever, pop them down below. I know I'm not replying to all the questions. I do try, and I've got to go through and reply to a lot of questions. But I do read every single comment. And I mean, I appreciate and read every comment. And it, it does help drive me on with the builds as well. So please comment. You're not adding any extra work or nothing at all. All you're doing is adding to my drive to finish this build. So keep them coming. Please keep the comments coming. I'd love to sit and reply to you all, uh, but it would take away from doing this. It would take away from the modelling because I can sit there for two hours replying to comments and barely make a dent in them, and that two hours could have been made to make another video. That, that's the kind of the way I'm looking at at the minute. Um, so I'm trying to reply to questions. And I'm just giving hearts or thumbs up to every other comment. But I do appreciate every one of you that watches and leaves a comment as well. If you're not subbed to the channel, make sure you sub, click the bell notifications, get notified of all the latest videos, and give the video a thumbs up or thumbs down. Like I say, feel free to leave a comment. As always, check out International Scale Model Facebook page and forum, upretail.com. We can get a lot of the products I've used in these videos. There's a big long list in the description of this video of all the products I use and where you can get them from. And of course, check out my Paul ISM Facebook and Instagram page as well, and the live show page and the Off Air Hangout group, 
and the ISET group build page as well for details of all our group builds. This is being built for our large scale, uh, 118th and bigger group build that we've got going on. Um, and there's a big calendar list over on the group as well, should you wish to uh, to take part. Yeah. If you had any ideas for future group builds, what would they be? That is today's question. So let's see who catches that one. What would you think would make a good group build? Uh, any genre, anything at all, what would you like to see? Can't guarantee we'll do it, but maybe for next year we will. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching today. I will catch you all next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.